Hi there, and welcome to Principal Based Performance Improvement, where our goal is to provide maximum knowledge per minute to help you move yourself and your organization toward better, safer, and more productive outcomes. In the last episode, I introduced you to the seven natural principles of human performance. If you recall, the first principle, the hub, the most important of the seven is trust. It's the most important principle because without trust, none of the other principles are worth a flip. Without trust, you have nothing. The remaining principles include power, progress, belonging, appreciation, respect, and justice. In the next episode, I'm going to show you how these seven principles fit into the transformation framework, how they align and interact to help you lead your team to think different, feel different, and ultimately to do different, and do so in a way that generates positive, sustainable, win-win outcomes. In this episode, I want to clear up some possible confusion. About the time my last book, Six Hour Safety Culture, was published, I climbed atop a personal soapbox to help leaders, especially senior leaders, understand the fundamental differences between values and principles. If this starts to sound uh, like a bit like of a rant, it's because it is. Well, I continue to speak my mind, I'm still seeing leaders who are confused about why the differences between values and principles are so darn important. My current observation is that far too many organizations with the best of intentions are still talking about and posting their core values rather than their core principles. I intend for the information in this video and in my new book, The Seven Natural Principles of Human Performance, to help finally move the needle on that conversation. So, values, principles, What's the big deal? Let's begin by going back to the origins, the Latin roots of the words themselves. Principle derives from the Latin principium, which means beginning, origin, or basis. Value, on the other hand, comes from the Latin valere, which means to be worth. Do you see the difference? Looking at definitions in Merriam-Webster's Unabridged Dictionary, we find that a principle is a general or fundamental truth, a governing law of conduct, whereas value means relative worth, utility, or importance. The differences between these two are significant. Principles are fundamental. They're rock solid, whereas values shift and vary, sometimes based on nothing more than which way the wind happens to be blowing. I want to make sure you truly get this. So let's consider a practical example. We lived in New Hampshire for several years. Like many homes in the Northeastern United States, ours had a mudroom at the top of the stairs, which we entered from the garage. Like all mudrooms, ours had a bench for donning and removing boots and a wall of hooks for jackets, scarves, ski caps, gloves, hats, and earmuffs. We typically dragged all that stuff out of the closet in early October. During the cold months, we had to plan ahead before going anywhere because it took so gosh darn much time to layer on all that clothing and gear. But with temperatures that sometimes dropped as low as minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit, which equates to nearly minus 29 degrees centigrade, you didn't dare leave home without them. On May 1st, the boots, coats, scarves, hats, and gloves were stowed back in the closet on the other side of the kitchen. The floor under the bench and the hooks on the wall remained pretty much empty, until the leaves on the trees began to fall once again in early October. Now, you might live or have lived someplace with really cold winters, in which case, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Either way, here's the question. How much value would you say we placed on all that winter gear while popping open beers and firing up the grill for our annual 4th of July fireworks? On the flip side, how about when we were sledding down our driveway with our kids on January 1st? Hmm, what changed? Well, the fact, in which case we could also call it a principle, that the human body is only comfortable and indeed can only survive within a narrow temperature range, didn't change. And the fact or principle that sub-freezing temperatures not only cause pain, but when exposed long enough without protection, Things like ears, noses, fingers, and toes can be physically damaged. That didn't change. However, shifting environmental conditions, in this case the outside temperature, generated substantial shifts in how much we valued our cold weather gear. In wintertime, 
Don't leave home without it. In summertime, what, Jack? I trust you grasp the massive insight in those last three statements. If you didn't, you might want to rewind and re-listen. Let's talk about how this actually works. If you've read Six Hour Safety Culture, watch some of our other videos, or perhaps learn this elsewhere. Here's a question. Which part of your brain asserts itself when incoming information appears threatening, complicated, or confusing? The answer? It's about the size of a walnut and sits right on top of your spinal column. For you scientific types, it's called the amygdala. It's the most primitive, most primal part of the brain, and because we like to keep things simple, we call it the lizard brain. Human beings are wired such that all external stimulation and information passes through this part of the brain before the rest of the brain is even allowed to process it. Because of this, it functions as a gatekeeper whose primary purpose is your survival. If you're not already familiar with it, here's how it works. When the lizard brain senses incoming information is either threatening, complicated, or confusing, it slams the gate shut to further thinking and, to promote your survival, pushes you toward one of three reactions. You either mentally or physically run away, which is also known as flight, or you directly resist and counter. In other words, you fight, or you simply freeze. Now, let's get back to you, your organization, and the differences between values and principles. You might still be thinking, yeah, but we've already spent a ton of money and energy promoting and promoting our core values, which are certainly different than caring about jackets, scarves, and gloves. Really? Here's my take. Words matter a lot. As author Rudyard Kipling put it, words are, of course, the most powerful drug used by mankind. Now look, if you've gone down this road, consider that Perhaps, even in the same sentence, you're asking your team members to differentiate between core values and their personal values, saying things such as, you know, core values are essential and inviolate. However, please keep your opinions, in other words, your personal individual values to yourselves while at work. What do you think that does to the brain? Causes confusion. And when confused, which part of the brain is likely to take over? The lizard brain. By promoting core values while simultaneously seeking to stop people from expressing personal values that might differ from those of their coworkers, politics, anyone, you are at a minimum diminishing your message. And it's entirely possible that you are directly manufacturing resistance toward your desired end state. Do you remember the old Kenny Rogers song, The Gambler, and its famous chorus line? You gotta know when to hold up. No when to fold up, no when to walk away, no when to run. Of course, it sounds much better when you hear Kenny singing those words. Here's the thing. I strongly recommend that you take Kenny's message to heart. And it's super easy to get started. It might be as simple as changing one word. Stop talking about core values and start role modeling, discussing and broadcasting your core principles. And hey. If you're not sure what your core principles are, what they should be, or how well they might align to generate your desired choices, actions, and behaviors, grab a copy of the Seven Natural Principles of Human Performance using the link provided in the comments section below. Okay, I'll end my rant for now. If you have questions or comments, especially about the difference between values and principles, I'd love to hear them. Use the link provided in the comment section below this video. In the next episode, we're going to dive into how to do this as we dovetail each of the seven natural principles with your framework for transformation. Once again, thanks a bunch for watching and listening. And if you're finding these insights helpful, please share them with your friends and colleagues. Help your search engine find more content like this for you by hitting the like button before you leave. And if these PPI messages resonate with you, subscribe to this channel so you don't miss the next one. Until next time, my friend, be safe, stay humble, and make a difference.